Welcome to HQ Live. I'm Kim Sandberg, and with me today is Christina Whitney. We're both studio educators here at Handy Quilter, and we are so excited today to kind of do a part two of an HQ Live we did. It's been about a year. Yeah. Um, Christina's piecing on the frame. You are super awesome at doing this, and you have so many cool ways of piecing on the frame. So let's jump in and talk about this technique, which is different than the one we did before. Correct. So let's look at this quilt back here okay. first. Um, so this is kind of the, the technique that we're going to focus on today. I know in our last HQ Live, there were some several requests mm -hmm. for us to actually show this type of right. piecing on the frame. So we listened to you and this is what you get today. So yeah. hopefully you'll like it. Um, this particular one is actually the first of this style that I did on the long arm. Okay. And I had a lot of Christmas fabric that ah, I didn't know what to do with. Right. And so I, I like to experiment. I like yeah. to play and see what I can come up with. So what I did was I just laid down these squares that were already cut of Christmas fabric. So like five inch squares or whatever, mm -hmm. each of these squares. Okay. So you yep. loaded your backing, batting, laid down squares. Correct. I didn't really measure or anything. Okay. I just put them side by side, try to kind of keep them in a straight line. Okay. And then I took these melon shapes that I had cut out and I just ah. laid them over the raw edge and stitched on to the melon shape. So it's awesome. it's a raw edge applique kind of technique, yeah. but I didn't have to do any piecing beforehand. Awesome. So quilting and piecing all at the same time. So I bet this was, I mean, obviously there was a bit of cutting involved unless you were lucky enough to get all this stuff pre-cut, but it probably went pretty fast by the time you got to the frame, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, well, I think the hardest part so is just cute. trying to figure out the layout where you want to put the different oh, fabrics. Yes, yes. So. so cute. So it just looks like a classic uh, cathedral windows yeah. without all that. I know my sister made mm -hmm. one and she like hand stitched it and it took her like years. Yes, yeah, so I call this my awesome. faux cathedral window. Faux cathedral window. Yep. I, love I love it. So awesome. from there we went I, over, let's go over here and we'll look at these samples okay. that we've got here. So this was just a, a simple sample using that exact same technique mm -hmm. of laying the pieces down underneath and then putting yeah. the melon over the top. Um, okay, cool. I do want to point out though, if mm -hmm. you're using a dark fabric on yeah. the bottom and then a thinner light, light color on the top, the underneath is probably going to show through. Yeah. So you can kind of see the line there. You can see that um, a little bit, but you know. So, you know, get maybe better quality fabric to put over the top. Or maybe reverse or, the two. Yeah. Who and, knows? And that's actually what we're going to play with today. Oh, fun. Okay. So we're, we're going to do things a little bit differently today. Okay. Um, this is another one where you can see this one's a little bit more scrappy, mm -hmm. just random fabrics. Okay. Now, wait, you've got like little, you got, you got, what's the story behind this? So why do you have little things pinned to it all over the place on this one? So this was a block exchange. Well, not really a block, but a square exchange. Okay. With the Handy Quilter Inspiration Squad from 2017. Oh, okay. So everybody was supposed to send in a five inch square mm -hmm. of fabric that represented themselves. Okay. And then they were exchanged. And so all of their labels I attached on there. Oh, so they're cute. just pinned on right now. Um, but that's my, my memory of my group that I was with. So that's fun. So, yep. That's very fun. Lots cool. of fun. Yeah. So then I moved on to another technique. And this is probably one of my most commented on quilts that yeah. people love to see. Yes. And um, it's incredible. It's the exact same thing, except for this one, I used a whole cloth for the base fabric. Okay. So I put down my backing, mm -hmm. then my batting, then this cream fabric. Okay, so you loaded that just like you would load a normal quilt top, right? Yes, okay. yes. And then I put this scrappy stuff on the top. Mm -hmm. And again, it's raw edge. It's super, super comfy, super crazy. Um, oh, again, it's fun. It's, so scrappy. Yeah, grandma's blocks. So, <laughs> so this is what we're going to do today. But we're going to kind of reverse the color scheme and do it a little bit differently. Okay. But I'm going to walk through the steps, the steps for doing this. And the steps are the same whether you're doing it in this triangle configuration or the more um, classic cathedral windows with the squares, right? Correct. Your okay. stitch path will be a little bit different. Right. And everybody can pick their own stitch path. Right. So I, I don't know if you'll notice on this one, I actually had these little squiggle ah. lines that I would stitch through because for some reason the stitch path that I ended up on, I mm -hmm. I think I did like one, two, but I needed to end up here. Uh, so I just squiggle through the middle back. as my travel to get to the next nice. line and then squiggle to the next one. Very nice. So yeah, you can use whatever travel technique that you want. You just want to get these stitched down there. 
Gotcha. It looks great. It looks great. And this is this is every time we display this or the, your other the Christmas one, and mm -hmm. people are always like, "How does she do that?" So yeah. The mystery is going to be revealed. Yes. <laughs> All my secrets will be gone. Oh, yes. Okay. So the first thing that I did was mm -hmm. um, I picked my fabric. Right. So I picked my backing okay. and my um, background fabric. And mm -hmm. for the one we're going to work on today, we're going to use black fabric. Ooh, I, like that. I like that. So we're, we're trying new things. We're experimenting. Okay. So we'll see how it turns out. And you had commented, I know when we were talking about this before, you actually got inspiration from like an artist challenge that rather than using like white paper for a backdrop, use black. So you yes. kind of took that challenge yes. with the fabric, right? So this is kind of from a color theory or art perspective. Yes. So we'll, we'll see how it turns out. I'm okay. really excited for it. Yeah. Okay, so I have all of these um, rectangles that were already cut okay. from my grandma. And those are like and what? Two these by four? are, I actually wrote down my measurements for these. These were four and um, a half by one? They're four and a half. And then what I did is I oh. cut them into half okay. so that they were more like one inch. Okay. And then these one inch pieces, I just took my scissors and I just trimmed them. Oh, look at you. Making a point. I was not very accurate on these just getting it done it's so yeah. then i end up with my melon shapes perfect okay and these are going to be raw edge okay. they're going to be kind of right fluffed up so it doesn't matter if they're not perfect absolutely okay yeah so made a whole bunch of those okay I, and i didn't count how many because yeah you just have to fill whatever space you want to fill on the size i mean because you could yeah. do this with two by six inch or whatever mm -hmm. and however big you're going to do yeah yep you can totally see that so yeah, my biggest thing is just pick what size you want to do it, and that's mm -hmm. how you're going to mark your fabric. Okay. So I've got this piece here that I it's your backing. I'm going to mark. Actually, this, oh, this is, is not. this is the quilt top. That's right. This I is the quilt top. quilt top. And I'm going to move this out of the way so we have some space to work here. Okay. So I have my melons here, and what I did was I'm, I'm sure there's a math technique to this that you can do. Geometry or something. I do the lazy version and I want my corners to kind of cross over each other. Right. And I'm not worried about anything sticking out a little bit. Okay. So can I hand, can you hand me that ruler there underneath? Yes. So I created my triangle mm -hmm. and then I just measured approximately from, you know, there to the middle. Okay. And I ended up with about three and a half inches. Okay. So that was the measurement that I used, and that's how I got my measurement. Okay. So three and a half inches is what I'm gonna do. So that's that's basically like the size of your row, is Correct. what you're saying. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm just gonna mark okay, three and a half and a half. Three and a half plus three and a half is seven. Seven, yes. Plus another three and a half. Uh ten and test. a half. And ten then and another half? one. Oh, Christina, stop making me do math. <laughs> So here's, here's what I did. What? I did seven plus seven, so 14 to 21, and then I just found my middle point. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like the way that we do math here. This is great. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I'm gonna mark like seven, 10 and a half, 14. So you're just making marks across here so you can draw your lines Correct. across. Is uh -huh. that right? Okay. That is right. Of course. So I'll take my ruler and I'm gonna go back. Now you're using, oh. what are you using for a marking tool here? Because yeah. I was waiting to see how long it took you to notice. Yeah. This is the handy pencil uh -huh. that um, Handy oh, Quilter sells. The iron off pencil, right? It is the iron off pencil. Mm -hmm. So I can write on this as much as I want. And then even though I'm going to cover it with fabric, uh -huh. even if I write somewhere else or I make a mistake, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because it will iron off. It'll just iron off. And this is this pencil is really great because you're going to be able to roll this up on one of the poles and it's not going to disappear like it would if you were using uh, chalk. Correct. Even some markers and stuff, if you get a little friction going on there, it's going to disappear. Yeah. This this stays on there pretty good. So. And I really like how it worked on the black fabric. Yeah, it really shows up well. If I were using a white background, I would probably use the blue water soluble pen okay. because yeah. um, if I'm not going to finish it right away, I don't want the disappearing yeah. ink, the, no, the air no. soluble to have to remark it all it over again in the frame. Yeah, no thanks. Yes. Okay, so a little bit more geometry for today. Oh no, oh no. Okay, go. I know you already have this figured out. So, <laughs> so we have our triangles. Okay. We have to do our angles. So oh, we great. need lines going okay. opposite directions. 
So I'm not going to tell you or ask you to tell me what angle it Thank is. Thank you, Christina. But it is 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Okay, 30 and 60. So on my ruler here, I have a 60 degree oh, line. Nice. So I'm going to line that 60 degree up with one of my existing lines. Very nice. Or if I knew that I had cut this perfectly square, I could have used that too. That works. So I'm going to line that up. And then and once then, you get one line laid down, you're good to go, right? Well, I'm going to flip it over and okay. do it the other side now. Okay. Oh, so you get the, tri the full triangle. Gotcha. Yeah. And I'm actually going to extend that all the way down. Okay. And then I'm going to, I've got my mark right here. So uh -huh. I know that's where I'm going to intersect. Okay. So I'm going to lay my ruler down. You want to flip that over? Nope. Okay. I'm on my 60 degree, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do my line across there. And I would just work my way up. Gotcha. Okay. So you're essentially marking out a grid with the straight lines for the rows and then the angled lines so that you know exactly where to put all these little pieces, these little melons you've cut out. Mm -hmm. Can I? And, and you'll yeah. notice that it's not intersecting just perfectly mm -hmm. because I'm a little bit off. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. I'm just getting kind of the ballpark. Right, right. And as we go over to the machine, you'll be able to see how off some of my markings are. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sure they're not off by too much. Okay. So then. Got that all figured out. Yep. Look at that. So once I have the entire thing marked, mm -hmm. I will go back and take my melons and lay them out, kind of get an idea of the colors mm -hmm. and the placement of them. Because, of course, Christine is going for a scrappy look because she always does scrappy. Yes. Yeah, so I don't <laughs> want a blue next to the blue. Right. So maybe I'll put it over here and then maybe, put, I don't know. Okay. Good so can you grab that picture for yes. me? Yes. So I actually laid this out and I think this was about 45 by 60-ish. It looks so cool. So a lot of melons. And what I did is I just cut out a whole bunch of them, laid them out sporadically, mm -hmm. try to balance colors. Mm -hmm. um, and then as I realized I needed more pieces, I'd go cut some more, right. put them in, and I just plugged in. So all of my white lines that I've marked on my black fabric are covered. They're covered, so it really doesn't matter that they weren't exactly perfect. Correct. Because they're really more like guidelines. Yes, they, they are guidelines. And okay. you saw how I cut my melons. They're yeah. not perfect yeah. either. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very freeing. We're going for a handcrafted look here. Yes. I love it. Yes. I love it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Okay. Um, at this point, these are just loose. Okay. So All the melons are just laying them down. down. Yep, you didn't just glue like them they or are anything. Here. Correct. Okay. And then um, you could do this technique, or if you are good at seeing your colors, you could just randomly put them on, on the frame. Okay. Either way. So for this particular one, since I had so many colors, I did want to lay it out first mm -hmm. and get an idea of the placement. Right. So I took the picture. Mm -hmm. So now I have a picture. So if Smart. I my melons get mixed up, yeah, then I I know where they're supposed to go. Yeah. I also numbered my rows. Smart. And then I went through and I picked these up uh -huh. all the way across that whole row. And you've got one there. So this one is row number six. So you can see number six starts with that pink. And you just I just them clipped together. them all together. So I have each row ready to go and they're Sorry. in order and so and the row for you is all three like it's it's those three and then it's those three and then it's those three right all the way across the row like that correct okay. um so actually I, i'll show you from the start okay so actually let me take you over to the machine because okay. i i numbered on my oh, fabric using my handy you. pencil the order that they went in so okay. we'll bring this and let's go over to the machine okay so let's go over to the frame here now and let's talk about what you've got loaded here. Okay. So we've got set up here on our loft frame. So while we're still talking about the, mm -hmm. the, um, the row numbering, mm -hmm. so you can see right here, I numbered one, two, three, oh, one, that. two, three. So that was the order for that row. Mm -hmm. So when I take my pieces out, mm -hmm. number one, one two, three. goes right there. Okay, number two goes right there. Number three, three goes so that's, right there. One, two, three, and all the way around. And this oh, will be, this is all smart. the pieces that go across that top okay. row there. Okay. Okay, so that was how I tried to keep track of things. So it's 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 in order, 
But once again, this is scrappy. So if it got a little bit out, it would be fine. Yeah, right? it, yeah, yeah. always. Cool. Um, okay, so on here, I have loaded a black backing. Mm -hmm. And I've never used the black know, batting. So this is my first time using black batting. So I'm really excited it's so about it. so cool. It's so cool. This is so. a very black quilt with all this pop of color on yeah. the black. I love it. Yes. So I'm, I'm really excited about this one. Um, and you, the thread you chose too is way fun. Yes. I used a variegated thread. Can we see up here? And it's a King Tut thread. So it's a little bit oh. heavier thread. Cotton thread. Yeah. Cotton thread. Um, I, I couldn't pick a thread color that would oh, go with all of these. No. So I'm just going to go really, really wild and crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll use something that has all of it. Yep. And, and so do you, do you recommend a heavier thread because you are, you're quilting and piecing like all at one time through more layers than we normally do here too. So, oh, or do you think I, it really matters? I don't know that it really matters. Okay. I probably wouldn't use a micro quilter, like a right. hundred weight threads right. for this project because mm -hmm. it is, this isn't something that's going to be going into a show. Right. It's meant to be used or even displayed. Yeah. But yeah, I like to have a, a sturdy thread. A sturdy thread. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. Sturdy thread. A, a good sturdy thread. Yes. All right. Awesome. Okay. So I've got everything loaded. I'm marked. You notice I put top up here. Smart. I also numbered each row on here with my handy pencil. Very smart. So I know which row I am on as and, I advance. And this whole thing is marked with the uh, with these triangles. Yep. So you okay. can see that. Awesome. Yep. The entire thing is marked. That's so cool. And you can tell that this is the top where I started. So mm -hmm. things were still lining up at this point. By the time we get to the bottom. You, you'll get a little bit more of this here. A little bit more of I It doesn't it. matter. No, no. Well, especially because when you place these melons over, it just completely covers all of that up. Yep. So. Exactly. Okay. I love it. Okay. So a couple options here for placing yeah. our melons. Yeah. You can use just your basic school washable. Just make sure it's glue. washable. Yep. That's the important part. Washable, washable glue. glue stick. Okay. Um, you could use a 501 or 505. 505. <laughs> my blue jeans no 505 temporary adhesive or any other brand okay um are there any tools um, that you use when you i'm trying to think i i think that those are the ones i would use i might use like i've really gotten into using the basting glue that comes in the little and it like squirts out of like a really long fine okay. little spout kind of looks like our oiler um i could see where that would work too because it's just like one or two drops of glue and it holds everything in place once again it's just it's a washable glue so it's the same thing. Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you wait to do this until it's in the frame. You know, you you don't do this before. Like you had everything laid out here. You wouldn't glue it and then try to stick it on here because that would be a little. I I wouldn't because as I'm rolling this up, mm -hmm. you're gonna joggle things loose right. and it's probably gonna end up being a mess. Yeah. Yeah. So I prefer to just do it right on the frame. Right on the frame. So it, and again, if I didn't care about the color placement as much, or if I had a specific pattern, oh yeah, I I would just probably skip, skip that step, step and mm -hmm. I would just do it right on the frame. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue a couple of these down. Okay. And. I guess I can take my sticker off telling me that that's row number one. <laughs> yeah, I don't really think you want to. Although I have stitched over tape before. It, it I have. serrates the edges and it actually peels off quite nicely. Yep. So. I did a whole video series using painter's oh, tape that's right. that I, I stitched that. over. I remember that. Yeah. Okay, so just a little, a little hit of glue there. Yep. And are you going to glue down the whole row at first or just do one at a time? Um, I would do the whole row. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would actually even do my whole throat space. Okay. Just do it all at once. Yeah. And um, sometimes I'm lazy and I don't even want to use the glue. Mm -hmm. So I can just even lay it down and just, just roll with it. hold it in place as I stitch. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. It's really not going to go anywhere. And I mean, depending on the type of fabric you're using, um, I've noticed on some of your other samples here, the white you used on top is a flannel. I know that flannels tend to have a little more stick to the fabric. Yes. That probably using something like that, thinking ahead enough. And, and I really do like the flannel because it frays real nicely. Yes, yes. flannel does. Okay, okay so I am so just see your... laying these out. It's so fun to see it come together. I love, I feel like this is like a technicolor quilt. It's just, it's just fun. 
all the fun colors. I, I keep thinking, I, you know, been watching you prepping for this for the last week and <laughs> Um, I keep thinking I want to do one with some really big melons and then I could have some really big fun prints that would show through in the center. So maybe I'll have to give that a try. Yeah, and this the width of your melon shape mm -hmm. will determine how much shows. Right. Because I know oh, when, yeah. when I first cut them out... Um, I remember they were too fat, I, You couldn't see any of the background. Yeah. yeah. So I had to go down and make them skinnier. Them a little so, skinnier. Do that first triangle first before you go through the effort of cutting everything, <laughs> right? And see how you like it. A little, a little, uh, a little time on the design wall yes. saves a world of redo later. And man, you would not want to be picking this out and being like, mm, or yeah, yeah, I just wouldn't even want to go there. No, oh, this looks really good. And you're not. I mean, I notice that you're laying these out the same every time, but you're not so concerned about which colors are always overlapping. Is that right? Correct. I don't okay. care which one's on top. Okay. So but there's our row. That looks so cool. One thing that you did just mention was that I was laying them out in the same order. Mm -hmm. That's going to be my stitch path. Okay. okay. So just laying them out, that kind of gets me in the mindset of, okay, I'm going to stitch up, up. over, uh -huh. up, over, and then I'm going to hop over to the next group. Okay. Up, down, up, down, hop over. Okay. And so the bottom's not being stitched no, yet. No, it's not. So when I get to the very end, uh -huh. I'm going to go up, down, up, down, over. And then I'm going to go up and down just on that one remaining one. Right. And then I'm going to loop it back. You're going to come back. Okay, I love this. You're, you are being very deliberate in saying, this is going to be my stitch path so that mm -hmm. I do not have to cut any threads. Correct. I love it. Yep. I love it. You are the queen of that. So, so as awesome. long as I don't get any shredding coming right to left, <laughs> I Although, could do this entire quilt without breaking my thread. Right. Let's, let's talk for a second though. So, so you talked about how on this one you're going to come back. If you actually had your next row set up, would you, would you come back and do this and then maybe stitch, you know, inside? another row of triangles or do you want to do stitch down this whole row first before you move on to row two? Um, it doesn't really matter as long as you can get a stitch path that will be continuous. Okay. So my goal is I, I just focused on the one row and getting the entire thing stitched stitch down. down. Then I can move on to my next row. Make sure but you don't miss an edge. Yes. Okay. And um, one of those samples, there is one piece that did not get stitched down and I'm it's leaving it like that. It's a it's a flapper. Yes. Is that what you're telling me? It's just me? one side yeah. is stitched on. But okay. I'm yeah. human. I like to have yeah. my mistakes yeah. to show people. Well and so. I think I think too when you're doing this solid um where the quilt top is solid, um if you do miss a spot like that, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. Whereas like with this one in the background, if you had missed one of the edges, <laughs> you'd have a whole like hidden pocket, yeah. so to speak. So okay. Yeah, yeah, so you can come up with any stitch path that you okay. want. There's, there are sure no, rules no rules at all with this project. Just got to make sure you get all those edges stitched Wait, down. There is one rule. Okay, what's the one rule? Actually, two rules. Okay. And I'm going to keep making up more. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Have fun with it. Oh, absolutely. And finish it. Right, right. I totally agree. Yeah, so. And I'm, I'm having regrets already. Why? I love this. I put black thread in the bobbin because I've got the black back. Oh, right. And I'm seeing this thread that we're using on the top, and oh. I'm wishing I had put that on the bottom. Because can you imagine that secondary well, design on the bottom? do we need to take a second and swap it out? Should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's find you a bobbin. Okay. Quick. Okay. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, okay. Christina, we got the <sighs> we got the bobbin on there. Because yes. I totally agree. We need to use this fun this fun colored thread yes. on the backing. So, All right. Okay. So before you start stitching, I just had a thought. What if I really wanted to make sure, because on the back I want it to look all perfect here, I really wanted to make sure that curve was exact every single time. So I noticed that you've got the glide foot on here. Could I do this with rulers? Definitely. So if I was doing it with rulers, I would just need to have what? I need to have my... Your ruler base, your sure foot, and a and ruler. ruler. Yeah. Okay. And when I made this quilt here, mm -hmm. I actually used one of my Handy Quilter Arc rulers oh, to really? cut out this shape. Oh, cool. And then yeah. I used the ruler to stitch mm -hmm. it in place for the first row. For the first row. <laughs> I then, love that you admit, you're like, the first row is perfect. 
And the rest of the quilt was free motion. Watch me free motion. <laughs> I love that. I love that. But you know, at the same time too, I'm sure that after you'd done a whole row of that specific motion, it was easier just to stay within that because you've mm -hmm. kind of gotten that stitch path in your mind, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. So this one's going to be interesting for us. Okay. So I'm glad that we changed that bobbin thread. Yes. It's going to be a lot more fun on the I back. I totally agree. So I've gotten the machine set in cruise at okay. 12 stitches per inch. Okay. Um, and again, I, I'm not really going to be super, super careful about everything. Right, I'm right. just going to let it flow. And you're, but you, you're, so the goal is to stay roughly a quarter inch away from the edge, roughly. It's just personal preference. Okay. So just because you are going to want that, that edge should just fray up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to stitch right on the edge, stitch it in just a little yeah. bit. Okay. And, and you don't even have to do that arc shape. Like the, the one sample oh. that I showed that did the squiggle. Yeah. You could do anything in here. You could just do a squiggle. Again, no rules. Right. I love it. Okay, cool. Okay. okay. So let's, let's do some stitching. Okay. I want to, I want to see you stitch out this whole first row. Oh boy. And so I'm going to pause right there. That was beautiful. Gorgeous. I might be trimming off down that That's section. Okay. Well, you're going to um, trim the sides anyway before yes, you find it. So. Yeah. And here's another thing. I could trim away some of this extra fabric to make it look like I stitched it perfect. Right. You know, exactly. lots of options. Um, what was I going to mention? Oh, yeah. Since I do have the glide foot on, mm -hmm. it helps, especially when I don't have these edges uh, glued down. Right. But there are going to be times where the edges might pop up. And so bit. you'll just... Um, do a little, little minute. No, you, you'll want to stop and get the edges put okay. back in place before okay. you stitch over them. Okay. So, okay. So That's I went up. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to come down. Down this side. Up again. Whee! I think I might just go for the wobbly look on purpose on this one. I think it's great. Yes. Okay. And you're making sure to hit all those corners there. Yep. I can see that. <laughs> this is fabulous. It looks great. <laughs> Okay, coming up and down. And those really okay, are notice that move. Yeah, that, that did kind of pop up a little bit there, but that's okay. So I am going to just go for the wiggly move. Oh, my pieces aren't together. Well, let's just kind yeah, of readjust. fix that a little bit. That's easy. And again, the edges are going to be trimmed down. Right. So right. I, I tried to fill it in, but some of them you'll, yeah, you'll see when I get to the next row that it's not all the way filled in. Things wiggle around a little bit. It's not hard to just move them back in place. Okay, what did I do? You did you did a different stitch path that time. You came I down did. and you went across, but now you're just gonna go back up here yep. and keep going. But okay. luckily we caught that in yeah. time. Yeah. So your stitch path can change. Yeah. <laughs> intentionally or unintentionally. As long as you're getting all those edges stitched down, it's fine. It's totally fine. You want to sing me a song? You want me to sing a song? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pause that there for a second. Just get it back in position there. Whee! So I can definitely see some of the viewers watching this right now and being like, okay, I definitely am going to be gluing it in place yeah. and I will be using a ruler and yeah. everything's going to be perfect. But you know, to each their own. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You could just, uh, you know, like you're saying, oops. Oh, I've got to run away. Let's move that. Sorry. Good catch. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta move that for you. <laughs> um, yeah, I can see that just depending on the level of precision you want here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I just had a thought. Do you think I could set this up this stitch path and and you know you know me, 
create it in designer and then stitch it out? Do you think I would dare do that? Or do you think maybe just do like an all over edge to edge if I glued everything down over the top of this? Do you think that could be an option too? So here's what I would do. Okay. I would create your design. Mm -hmm. I would stitch out that design okay. on your fabric, gotcha. then go back and put the pieces on top of those gotcha. lines. Okay. Then you know that everything's going to be lined it's up. It's going to line up. Okay. Yep. That's actually a good idea. Okay. Yeah. So. I, I thought about stitching out the grid on this one, but yeah, I don't have press stitcher on this moxie. Yeah. So that's oh, okay. Free that's motion. Okay. Yeah, but free yeah motion. There, there are defi definitely okay. options out there. Just, I'm just kind of thinking of a different way to maybe tackle it. So brainstorming. Yeah, I like it. Like how your brain, pro stitcher brain works. Yeah. Me and my pro stitcher brain. <laughs> Hold him while we stitch. All right, Kay. now you gonna you gonna attempt it and do the wiggle back all the yeah. way back. Here? I'm gonna do the wiggle back. I got a sturdy okay. thread. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Um. So notice my my stitch line's not always the same distance from right. the edge of the fabric right. to the. Well, that's okay. Stitches, so, but it's... Why don't you go ahead and stitch back, and then we can kind of zoom in a little okay. bit and look at Get some the of your... Get machine out of the way. Yeah, <laughs> look at some of your stitches here and see how they did. Oh, that one bunched a little. That's okay, though. It'll give it extra I mean, texture. Yeah, well, and this is a quilt that's definitely meant to be washed and dried, so it's going to shrink up a little bit anyway, so a little bit of that isn't going to matter at all. Ooh, that guy went clear up there. Wow. Well, Christina, hey. that looks amazing. I love that with the, the, that fun thread in there. Um, the fact that it's not, it's, it's just free. It's open. It's however we want to do it. I think mm -hmm. it looks great. And the color, the color against the black is just so fun. I absolutely love it. I'm excited to see what it's going to turn out with, I know. turn out as I wash it and stuff. I am too. I am too. Um, and we're definitely, so you're going to, you're going to get this finished and we'll be sure and have some shots in here of the finished quilt when you get yeah. it all done. Um, what are you thinking of doing for binding? So is this, would this be oh. a good, um, a good project to do the binding on the frame and square it up? Or are you going to take it off definitely and square it up? I think for this particular one, I'm going to take it off and square it up okay. just because like this section doesn't have a piece in it. I mean, oh, I could right. do a half piece there if I wanted to, right. Right. but I'll probably end up trimming it along here. Okay. That's good um, to know. And then when I'm trimming it, I, I really want to keep it straight and square and square. So okay. if I had maybe my channel locks, um, oh, on yeah. the pro stitcher that I would probably be a little bit more likely to do that, but okay. Um, yeah, for this one, I'll, t I'll take it off and square it up first. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's so. good to know. Well, this is so cool. I think it's such a fun technique. I, I remember, um, last year when you, when we did your crazy scrappy on the frame, we got a ton of pictures from people. Yes. So I'm really hoping we get to see what all of you do with this technique because it is just, it is such a fun technique. Um, this just, I don't know. You called it your faux cathedral windows, right? Yeah. That's what we're kind of calling this. So, so great. Yeah. And it's, it's a great way to use up those scraps. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to get more comfortable with your machine. Right. For those right. of you that maybe only want to do pro stitcher and you're scared to do free motion, mm -hmm. this is a great project to work on for that because it doesn't have to be as precise. Right. It, it can be, you saw what we did right now. It can be free. It can be wobbly <laughs> and it all works out. So, and with this one, you, you know, my melons that I stitched, those points aren't going to match. Mm. And on the back, it's not going to match, but it's going to be throughout the entire thing. It's going to be consistent. Right. And so that's the, the thing that I'm aiming for is that consistency rather than the precision for this right. one. Right. That makes it so fun. So, yeah. Well, this has been so much fun. Um, yeah. 
I want to say thanks for watching this week. Uh, we really hope you enjoyed this technique and that you will give it a try. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel and be sure to join us next month for another HQ Live. Send us your pictures too. Please and do. I'm going to keep working on this. You keep working on it. <laughs>